Does this defense have any heart? That's no. Tough. They suck. The I've been telling you all season, they Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Kayla Carter, Slight? They shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> They have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, uh, Caleb Carter? It's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally. Does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Oh, my God. This year in the NFL is crazy. Um, I, I'm amazed at what I've seen thus far uh, going through here on these games and stuff. Two weeks ago, we got molly -whopped by the New Orleans Saints, and Derek Carr looked like he was the real deal. And now Derek Carr looks like a car crash. New Orleans has now lost the last two. The Baltimore Ravens were literally staring down at 0-3 coming into our house to play and looking completely inept and got themselves a win. The Buffalo Bills were looking like gangbusters. And right now, Buffalo is up 14-3. The NFL is truly more this year than ever before a week-to-week -week league. And I'm going to say that this year, injuries are going to be the key more than any time else. I don't remember seeing so many injuries this early in a season, especially to big-name players. Um, Rashid Rice, oh, my God. Um, wow. That was brutal seeing what happened. Pat Mahomes throws an interception. And it looks like it's going to be a pick six. Pat Mahomes tries to get in there and throw his body down low to, uh, you know, basically stop the runner. Misses the runner and ends up rolling on Rasheed Rice's knee. And you look at that and say, that was bad. It would not surprise me if we don't see him until 2026. Um, and you look at right now Kansas City. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Kansas City, forgive me. Not looking like the same team. They're not looking like the same team. But then again, from one week to the next, things change like crazy. Um, the Eagles last week, of course, going against New Orleans. They looked like they had turned their defense around. They look like ass ass. But one thing as Cowboy fans, I'm going to say a couple of things maybe for us that may be good is right now we're looking at being able to get reinforcements back at some point. We're going to lose D-Law for four to eight weeks, but it's not a season ender. Micah, you know, maybe one or two games. We should be getting Deron Black Land back at some point. But more than anything else, where the Cowboys are going to actually get a boost as the season goes on, one, it looks like the worst part of our schedule is right now. It gets easier as it goes down the stretch. Two, we're playing more first and second year players than anybody else in the NFL. And it takes time for those guys to get up to speed. You know, a lot of this has been made of uh, the Cowboys, their offense. They're not using a lot of motion and things like that. Some of this may be because we are such a young team that we've got to learn how to walk before we can run and learn how to run before we can sprint. And that's why they're taking their time on getting some of this stuff together. But here's what I have to say right now. Um, we have to, we all owe Dan Quinn an apology because see, here's what happens with us as Cowboy fans. When things aren't working out, or we make change, we immediately go through and say, oh, that guy sucks. That guy sucks. Instead of us looking back and saying, Jerry, you needed to give Dan Quinn the, the horses for the race. You need to give him the horses for the race and things. Instead, they say, oh, well, Dan Quinn just can't coach. He doesn't know how to call defenses. Man, why wasn't he you know, in a run-stopping defense, right? Because he didn't have the horses to do it. 
because Jerry Jones wouldn't give him the pieces. And he literally, when he left, he said there was never a sense of urgency for the Dallas Cowboys. And right now, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny that right now, Dan Quinn, first year in Washington, has a 3-1 and one team. Now, granted, they had a third-place schedule last year, so they have an easier road to, to hoe, but they're 3-1 and one and leading the division. And it seems like the organization has a sense of urgency and has given him the things that he's wanted. So... Instead of us pointing fingers at people that have left and say they were the problem, we got to look at the Cowboys and say the Cowboys, Jerry, are the problem. But with all that said, the way this season has gone, Minnesota has the best record in the NFC right now. Seattle is 3-0. and We'll see what they do tomorrow. But I don't know that anybody is literally – a great team. And this is where I would say for the Cowboys, and I know they won't do this. I know the Cowboys will not do this. But here's where you as the Dallas Cowboys should look at this and say, we have an opportunity that maybe between now and the trade deadline, November 15th, we get a couple more pieces. We might have a chance to go ahead and go all the way. Now, the Eagles, on the other hand, it seems like, with the exception of the Saquon Barkley move, it's looking like a lot of the moves that they made in the offseason, where Howie seemed to be, you know, Mr. Midas Touch and everything turned to gold, it seems like the law of averages is coming back down to earth. Uh, Bryce Huff, $17 million a year, And, bro, your quarterback, because he's a turnover machine, has more tackles and has literally wiped all his stuff from his Eagles things. You think about Kellen Moore? (laughs) We tried to tell you about Kellen Moore, guys. You guys are like, no, it is Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott sucks. He's got to have everything perfect. He had Kellen Moore, who's a genius. Okay. Hmm. Well, you got him now. You got him now. And I find it actually really funny that people are saying, fire Nick Sirianni and make Kellen Moore the head coach. Oh, okay. 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 And Baltimore right now up 14 to 3 is laying the wood to the Balt- to, to the Buffalo Bills right now they're across midfield and look like a well-oiled machine so don't get too upset even eagles don't get too upset but before i go i have to do this i i i'm sorry philly you know i love you son but the Eagles get Jahan Dotson, and yes, it makes the Eagles have one of the best wide receiving cores in the National Football League. But people are missing out who really benefits from this move, and that is simply the defense. This move helps the defense more than anybody can know. <laughs> oh, I, let's just, I, 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 listen. You got to understand, Paul, y'all. You got to understand, I've taken a lot of shit from Philly 500 and Dan Salio. You might do it, Kick. Look how happy. Here, and we all know by now, it is confirmed. The Eagles have the best wide receiving core in the NFL, and it's not even close. I'm sorry. It's not even close. What a move by Howie Roseman, baby. What a move. I know you guys have all heard the Eagles acquire Jahan Dotson in a trade from the Washington Commanders, and I got to tell you, this is I gotta one tell you best moves. I'm telling you because the truth of the matter is this. This offense is unstoppable. <laughs> it is going to be unstoppable. And though people are complaining and crying about the defense, 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 this helps the defense enormously, and we're going to explain why. But for those who've been – on planet Pluto, or hiding, um, you know, hanging out with Mark Holmes and his uh, voodoo doll Joe Boo. 
Here's what happened. Uh, the Eagles say this. We have agreed to terms on a trade with Washington Commanders uh, for, Was for wide receiver Jahan Dotson, a fifth-round pick in 2025 draft, in exchange for a third-round pick and two seven-round mm. picks from the draft. Now, you may be thinking, Howie Roseman wheeled and dealed this thing. He did everything he had to do. But the truth of the matter is, it's Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith is the guy that made this happen. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, back in the end of June, when Devontae Smith had his softball game, I did a video and I talked about the softball game, and I talked about how in this softball game that Devontae Smith does every year, it was really a front. It was a front for really reaching out uh, to other players and preparing yourselves yep. to get guys who are going to be eventual free agents. What do they do? They invite them into the softball game. Come on, play. It's for charity, all this good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you recruit them. You put the seeds there. You find you out put about the seeds there. So there you have it. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to leave Philly 500 alone. Uh, you know, he's had a hard enough day. He's had a hard enough day, and I shouldn't be mean to him. Because, you know, it, it's it's all fun and games because the same thing. You, you know it's a long season. You know payback is a bitch. But you know what? I, I'm not worried about next week. I'm going to enjoy this week. And as always, I appreciate you guys. But it's time to fear the commanders. Peace. By the way, King Dick back here. And so before we start this video, I got to get this mother humping thing out of the way. <clears throat> Mark Holmes is my daddy. <laughs>